All right, the next story I want to dive into is actually a local article. It, it's from a, an amazing reporter here in Arizona. His name is Dave Biscobing, and he is with ABC 15, and he did a year-long investigation of uh, Arizona and how we handle our Brady lists. We've got what's called a Brady list. So if you're not familiar with that term, if you haven't watched the show before, you're not familiar with it, here's what's supposed to happen. The Supreme Court has said that sort of like I explained earlier, right? The prosecutor's offices, they have all of the data. They have all of the information. They know more about their cops than we do, whether they're good cops or bad cops, whether they've been in trouble, whether they've been investigated by internal affairs, whatever the situation is, they have the data, we don't. So the Supreme Court of the United States has said, when the prosecutors are in control of that information, they have to disclose it to us. It's called exculpatory information. So if you've been charged with a crime, and the cop who arrested you is later found to have engaged in a bunch of misconduct. You know, this, this cop was singling out minorities or he was falsifying police reports or he was, uh, you know, mislabeling evidence or whatever it is, the accessing data he shouldn't have been accessing. The only people who know about that are the prosecutors and their offices. Well, they have to tell us about it because that can be very impactful in our defense. If you've been charged with a crime, but the cop who says you did something is a liar and we can show that th we can show that. Well, that makes our case a lot easier to defend. Now it's it's you who's pro, uh, proclaiming your innocence and a lying cop. So we need to know that. So what has happened around the country very, very poorly is that these different prosecuting agencies will actually keep separate lists. So they'll have these different lists that they'll circulate around. And the idea is that all of the bad cops are going to go on that list. And they're going to tell us, the defense attorneys, from time to time about what's on the list. Well, there's a lot of problems with that structure. There's a lot of problems with, with that, that data and that information. And so what Dave has done, he's gone through, and let me pull this article up, but he, he has done a great job going through and just really detailing uh, some of the problems that we see. So let's take a look. So under a scattered and broken Brady list system, Arizona law enforcement officials have routinely failed to adequately track dishonest and disreputable police officers, disclosing their misconduct in criminal cases and holding them accountable according to a year-long ABC 15 investigation. The the, in 1963, the U.S. Supreme Court in Brady v. Maryland ruled that police and prosecutors cannot withhold exculpatory evidence, especially past dishonesty by officers. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. If a cop has, has lied before or falsified stuff, we need to know about that. And we have an entire, we've covered this many times on this show and on this channel where cops will lie about just routine things, about mislabeling things or about, you know, how'd that scratch get on your car? Oh, I don't know. Somebody must have hit it. No, you hit it. You backed into that pole and you lied about it because you didn't want to get in trouble. We've covered those stories. So if a cop is being dishonest in their reports, if they're being dishonest with their own department, maybe they're dishonest with what happened in your case. That's why it's so important for us to know about these things. So here's what Dave did and ABC 15 did, and they did an amazing job. He, and he, did, he kind of summarizes the, the main problems that I've been railing about, ranting about on this show for a while now. He says, through a series of public records requests, ABC 15 requested Brady lists, which is that list that I'm telling you about, from every county in the state of Arizona. This uh, ABC also got thousands of pages of police misconduct cases, personnel files, and a database with every state police board case for the past 20 years. It's awesome. Really great work. Nice job on that. I mean, that's a lot of data, a lot of material to go through. Here are where the failures are and where the gaps are. There is no statewide list of Brady officers or official standards for what misconduct requires disclosure. Each county keeps their own list in their own way. None post the list publicly. So he's exactly right. So all of the different counties, so we got Maricopa, Pinal, Pima, Yavapai, Coconino, all these different counties, all of the prosecutor's offices keep their own lists. All right. So there's no crossover. So what happens if a cop from Maricopa County gets in trouble? Can he bounce over to Pinal or bounce over to Coconino County? Of course he can because these lists aren't uniform. They keep their own list and the lists are not even kept well. Uh, the last time that I saw a list that a prosecutor was using, it was an Excel file. It was just a, it was just a spreadsheet of names. And how do they how do they maintain this list? Well, they just emailed it around to everybody. 
So one prosecutor would send it over and then, you know, there'd be a main revision and then they'd pass that around to the other hundreds of prosecutors. So prosecutors are working off old lists. Prosecutors, you know, don't even look at the list. They don't even have it there. You know, nobody's maintaining one centralized list throughout the state of Arizona and none of the lists are public at all. And this is something I've had a problem with for a very long time. Why are these lists not public? What happens, let's say, for example, you're driving home on your way, you know, from work, home, way, way home from work, and you get stopped with a speeding ticket, and the cop is on this list, or you get charged with a, a reckless driving or a criminal speeding or some type of crime, and, and your cop is on this list, but you don't know to ask for it. You don't even know that maybe this cop is bad news. Maybe he's got a history of these types of, you know, harassing traffic stops or whatever it is. You don't, you don't know. You have nowhere to look. You can't go check out this officer. If you have a bad meal or you, know, you want to go to a new restaurant, you can check out what's, what's, what do the Yelpers say on Yelp? What does Google reviews say? You know, you can go get information about, about this stuff, but you can't do that with these cops. They hide these Brady lists because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to see that. And these are all negotiated out with the police unions and the different counties and the different cities. And it's a big problem because we don't know, which is why for a long time, I would hold up the mugshots of these cops who were arrested. And I would say, look, if you've been charged, if you were stopped by this guy right here, you may have a defense to your case. So give us a call. And we've kind of gotten away from doing that because there's, there's so many mugshots of cops. We can't keep track of them all. So, you know, it's one of those things that I think we should know more about these bad officers, but none of these lists are made public. There are also, according to Dave, no established punishments for police departments and county attorney's offices that withhold or hide Brady material. ABC 15 discovered at least 175 times in Maricopa County when officials delayed putting officers on the list. So they've got these really garbage lists that are not centralized. There's nobody's really maintaining them. They're getting emailed from prosecutor to prosecutor, but also there's kind of really no rules about who even goes on that list. So uh, if an officer gets in trouble, what the prosecutors say and what, you know, all of the, the city attorneys and everybody who cir circles their wagons around these cops, what they all say is, well, this isn't Brady material. You know, this was just a routine internal matters. And so we're not going to add that cop to the list. Well, you don't get to decide that. We want to be the ones who make that decision. We'll tell you about that cop's whatever that cop did, we'll be the ones who, who can judge whether or not it's exculpatory, whether it helps us. We're not going to take your word for it, Mr. and Mrs. Prosecutor. We're just not going to do it. So they don't put them on the list. They hide the list. They withhold it from us. They'll sit in this investigation stage for a very long time. So these cops will then, uh, ra you know, rather than uh, resigning, they'll transfer departments or the investigation will go on for months and months and months on end. And they'll never put them on the list because they'll say, well, the investigation is still pen pending. He may be totally exonerated when the investigation is over. That's that, that, that may be true. That may be true. You guys are investigating yourselves. So of course, why wouldn't he uh, be exonerated, totally exonerated from whatever allegations are made against him? So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, the inmates are running the asylum over in these prosecutors' offices, and it is not good. Dave Bisco being fined 175 times in Maricopa County when officials delayed putting officers on the list. So they delayed. And as I say here all the time, justice delayed is justice denied. If they can wait a year to put somebody on the list, how many more tickets did that cop hand out? How many more people pled guilty to crimes that that cop handed out because they didn't know any better because their attorney didn't know because that cop's name was not on any one of these lists and the lists themselves are garbage. They have not been passed around properly. There's no centralized list at all. Another issue that Dave Bisco being found, there is no requirement for police and prosecutors to report Brady level misconduct to the Arizona Peace Officers Standard and Training Board, which is the state agency that licenses officers. ABC 15 found hundreds of cases went unreported. So they don't even have to report them. So the, 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 the prosecutors, the police officers, they, they, you know, they don't even have to get reported over to the AZ, uh, AZ post and they just never make it to the list. So they've got a terrible list that they hide information and they delay putting people on. And then there's just some people that they don't put on the list at all. There's just no requirement. The police and prosecutors just don't even have to report it because they've made the internal decision that it doesn't count. You know, it's not Brady material. They've decided that, but you never hear about it. 
you who've been charged with a crime, our clients who've been charged with crimes, they would never know. And we would never know because they would never tell us because it's their office. It's their police department. They can manage their own misconduct. So it requires a whistleblower. It requires somebody on the inside. It requires the media. It requires an investigation by heroes like Dave who are out there digging through this stuff. You know, that's a lot of work that he went through and his and his people and his team over there went through. And it takes a, it took a year for him to do that. And he's got this bombshell report, which, by the way, is 100 percent accurate from my experience. He also says, finally, that Brady lists rely almost exclusively on voluntary reporting by law enforcement agencies. There is little outside oversight to ensure misconduct is properly investigated, sustained or disclosed. So it's. It's totally voluntary. So what do you think the likelihood is that officers who do bad things are going to tell on themselves or tell on other officers? It's very, very low. And in fact, I have a story that I'm going to get to later in the show about what happens to the cops who do actually blow the whistle. So this is a major problem. And this sort of ties back into a lot of what I was talking about with Kamala. You know, these are these are systemic failures. This is happening in Arizona, but I guarantee you this is happening in other parts of the country. Police, because the public doesn't know any better. They just don't know. They presume that there are no bad cops, that the cities are going to vet them, that the prosecutor's offices are going to vet them. But I will tell you this. We've been in many cases where prosecutors know, and I've had a conversation with them face to face. And if you watch the show, you know, <laughs> if you're a prosecutor, I've probably had this conversation with you about this cop is a terrible person. This cop is a racist. This cop singles people out. This cop is bad news. This cop has too many uh, physical altercations with people. Too many people are injured. Too many problems. His reports are too bad, but the prosecutors don't do anything about it. They, and many of them acknowledge it. I've had conversations with prosecutors who say, yeah, we know, we know about that guy. Um, but you know, what can we do about it? They can't, they can't do anything. And AZ Post doesn't do almost anything about it. The prosecutors don't do anything about it. There's no list. The public doesn't know any better. And a lot of this stuff, it's, it, we as defense lawyers are prohibited from releasing these lists. So if we did get a list from a prosecutor and I said, I want to put, put this on our website, I think the public should know about this. I think they should know about the bad cops. What if they're stopped by a bad cop? What if there, you know, there was a story I did last year about a, about a cop who was charged, we got to do a follow-up on this, who was charged with like 66 counts of sex assault and these types of, of just you know, horrendous things happening to women that he would stop on the side of the road. It was an Arizona DPS cop. His name escapes me. Uh, his picture is over there on my mugshot wall, but I can't see his name. I, I can't remember what it is. But my point is that there are a lot of predators out there who are hiding behind a gun and a badge. People need to know who these bad cops are. The, the prosecutor's offices, the politicians, the police unions, the police departments, they all don't want you to know about it. They don't want you to have any of this information because if you did, well, then they'd have to you know, make some changes and have a seriously hard conversation and probably fire a lot of people. They don't want to do that. The unions want to protect the cops. The, the prosecutors want to protect the, the departments and the unions. And they all just have this big incestuous gross relationship where unfortunately they get to keep skating by, but you, the public, our clients, they don't get the same benefit. So the Brady list is a, a, you know, a major problem. When I was going through a lot of my analysis over the George Floyd protests, I'm saying there should be a national publicly accessible database so we can keep track of these things. And I want to see a lot less of cops getting in trouble because there's no, nobody's keeping track of this stuff. You know, getting in trouble in one county, going to a different county, getting in trouble in Arizona, going to New Mexico. They just take some time off. They go be a bad cop somewhere else. Doesn't solve the problem. It's just it's just, you know, moving bad cops all over the place. It's not good. And Dave Bisco being who did an amazing job with his investigation, this fellow right here, Dave Bisco being follow him wherever you follow people on Facebook and on Twitter. He does a great job. Uh, I follow him on Twitter. He's always tweeting. He, he really does a great job holding uh, uh, law enforcement and our justice system accountable. So hats off. Nice job, Dave Biscobing.